Carpe DM VPN. Seize the network. Hey everyone, welcome back. We're here to talk about LAN automation with Cisco DNA Center this time around. Uh, last time we talked about what SD Access is, kind of the use cases, what the lab design looks like. And if you remember, what we were talking about at that time was here we're going to provision the SD Access fabric. And that right now, everything southbound of Cheese 6 and Cheese 7 is in PNP mode, meaning Cisco plug and play mode. So, for those who are unfamiliar with plug and play mode, what we're talking about is basically mint in box, if you will. So, it has no certificates, it has no uh, VLANs, it has, it's just like it came out of the box. And when it comes out of the box, it comes in PNP mode, which is basically the idea that you can just plug it into a network. It will do a DHCP request, and if you're running a plug-and-play server of some sort, that plug-and-play server uh, address can be delivered as part of the DHCP request, and then you know it'll uh, pull an IP address, and then use basic routing to get to the PNP server, which will bootstrap it by giving it a config, uh, delivering it all of the information it needs to get basic connectivity going, so that it, it can be controlled. It works the same way with this. Um, LAN automation leverages PNP, but LAN automation is specific to D DNA Center, and it's used to bootstrap a greenfield software-defined access deployment. So the devices are in PNP mode, and what we need to do now um, is get into DNA Center and configure Cheese 6 and Cheese 7 to be what are called seed devices. These are devices that are already discovered by DNA Center. They're already reachable on the network. <clears throat> And they're connected to, uh, physically connected to devices that are in a PNP mode. And DNA Center can do LAN automation with devices that are up to two hops away physically, so through another switch, um, two hops away from the seed devices. So our setup here works just fine because we have uh, the borders, which is G6 and 7 and then we have a distro and then an access layer or an edge layer when we start provisioning the fabric. So this use case is perfect for that. If for some reason we had more layers, say there was a, another access layer off of the you know cheese uh, 12 and 13 and so on, what you would do is we would run LAN automation first on the two layers and then we would rerun it again closer using a seed device that's actually further down the stack once we pulled those into DNA Center. So let's go ahead and run through it. Um, before we run through it though, let me show you basically what we're, what, how it's going to work and what we're to expect. So the first thing is that we're going to set Cheese 6 and 7 as seed devices, like I said, and that's a job, a config job by DNA Center. DNA Center is going to push config over to Cheese 6 and 7. And what's, uh, what that's going to do is it's going to configure the southbound interfaces from 6 and 7 to connect to a PNP environment, meaning we're going to blank the config, we're going to put it in VLAN 1, and they're going to build, the DNA Center is going to configure on 6 and 7 a DHCP scope. And that scope is going to include uh, using VLAN 1 as the default gateway for the, for the scope, and it's going to have an option 43 for any device that connects pointing at the DNA Center to go so that any device that uh, connects during LAN automation will go, go find, you know, get an IP address, become routable, go find DNA Center, get claimed, and have its configuration allocated. Now when we create an IP address pool for LAN automation, we just designate a very large block of IPs and we hand over the entire block to DNA Center and it's going to carve it up as part of LAN automation. So LAN automation includes a DHCP scope for the plug and play process so that the uh, switches can bootstrap themselves, get an IP address via DHCP and then become routable, go reach out to the DNA center, uh, get claimed and then get its, um, get its config allocated. Uh, the second part of the scope or the LAN auto pool will be for point to point IP addressing. So once LAN automation stops, DNA Center will deliver uh, every configuration to every device that was discovered programmatically, and then those devices will basically configure their layer 3 links and the routing uh, over those layer 3 links. So it kind of builds the network right there, 
And then of course another part of the land auto pool is reserved for loopback addresses, which uh, DNA Center hands out to each device. And that's about it for land auto. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the land auto process and we can get a little bit more deep into it there. So here we are within DNA Center uh, with, in our lab. You can see from a design perspective we have our uh, top tier home campus and then we have two buildings underneath that and a data center. This is all part of the design uh, part of DNA Center. This is where we create our hierarchy. So that's going to matter in terms of land automation uh, for where we're going to place devices as we find them. But just it's, it's not really important for this part for just, just to understand that DNA Center has a, uh, a hierarchy where we have to configure things like IP address pools, uh, telemetry servers so we can have uh, say SNMP servers live be different in one building over the other or be globally significant and so on and so forth. So what we'll do is we'll go to provision and land automation within DNA Center and we have to make some choices here. So based on the site hierarchy we have to decide so where am I where am I running this job? Where, where in my network am I gonna run land automation? Am I gonna provision my network? So in our case, we've put our devices in building B, our seed devices specifically. Our seed devices are in building B, and that means when we choose building B, it's gonna give us our list. Now in our case, if this is a lab and we only have two seed devices, but you can imagine if this were a large uh, production network, based on our site, we might have a very large list of devices we could use as seed devices here. So we'll choose cheese six, and then on our peer site, we'll choose cheese seven, as the peer device. Now when we choose a peer device, notice that based on the device we chose, we're limited or uh, yeah, we're limited in the interfaces that we can choose to become seed interfaces. Now those will be the interfaces that get configured as plug and play facing interfaces, get their VLAN 1 config on them. Um, and so if we're going to use peer devices, you'll notice we don't have the ability to choose different interfaces for different peer devices. So uh, going back to our diagram here, you'll notice that Cheese 6 and Cheese 7 actually have the same interfaces allocated and southbound. So that's part of the network design if you're going to run LAN automation with multiple seed devices is that they share their downstream links so that we can check our boxes here and choose these downstream uh, links and they're going to be shared between the they're going to be the same on both devices rather so you can see our discovered device site for this land auto job for the devices that we discover where are we going to put them in the DNA Center site hierarchy so we're discovering from building B we're just going to go ahead and put them all in building B but we have the ability to choose you know we could run multiple jobs and you know this side of the campus or this building will go in that building and we'll rerun the land auto job and that part will go into that building. Again, because this is a lab and I'm really just demonstrating, um, we're just gonna put all of them in the same building. Now our IP pool, this, this matters a lot because we need to configure an IP address pool, like I mentioned earlier, to hand over to DNA Center. So I created an IP address pool called land auto pool SDA and it's a it's a block of IP addresses uh, I think it's a slash 22 so we've you know we've got quite a few class C's here four class C's to split up and we need to specify an IS IS domain password I'll go ahead and do that and you'll see here you can show it I'm just doing Cisco 123 if we want to enable native multicast instead of head-end replication we check this box and that will automatically that tells DNA Center to also supply an underlay multicast configuration, not just um, you know, IP addresses, ISIS, and routing, but configure uh, the seed devices as the rendezvous point, configure MSDP, and then configure all the underlay devices that are discovered to use that as their, ARP, as their rendezvous point for underlay multicast. Now here we have a device, the ability to add a device name prefix. So, Again, if we were going to discover for a particular building, you know, maybe you have a maybe the company has a nomenclature or naming convention 
that they use, you know, in this site, in this building, this hierarchy, you know, every device starts with X, Y, Z. How, you know, that that's where we would put this. And then every device that's discovered would then get, that would be tacked onto the front, X, Y, Z. We also have the ability to do a host name map file. Now a host name map file means we can actually map using a CSV, we can map serial numbers no, I don't have one. You can see this. But you can use serial numbers and map that to a discovered host map or host name map file. So if your serial number, you know, ends in, you know, is say XYZ123, uh, you could map that with a CSV and say when you discover this device, this will be its host name. So that's an option as well. All right, so that's about it. Um, this this pay attention to this one. Devices will be auto-upgraded to the golden image selected. Within DNA Center, we have the ability to specify for a particular site, a particular device role, particular device um, model, what is the image that we are going to consider to be the right image, the golden image. That's the, the production image that we're using. As part of the land automation process, if it detects that the device onboarding has a different version, DNA Center will uh, try to use the plug and play process to auto upgrade the device to the golden image as well. This could be this could have unexpected results if your uh, device isn't in install mode, which is the uh, which is right now at least what DNA Center supports. It only supports install mode for plug and play. So if you have a now out of the box, it's going to be in install mode. So that's the use case. In a lab, of course we might have some running in bundle mode, some running in install mode, just depends on how it's been set up, how it was provisioned for the lab. So this one actually bit me in the butt a little bit and, and I had to go troubleshoot why the device was not doing land automation and wasn't on, on boarding. And it had to be, happened to be that we had set a, a golden image and that, then we were trying to land automate a device that was in bundle mode and that was failing. DNA Center couldn't upgrade it and it, it failed the plug and play process. So just play, pay attention to this. If you're gonna do land automation that, you know, uh, pay attention to whether or not you have golden images. And especially if you're in a lab, make sure that you're either running install mode or that you untag or remove the golden image prior to running land automation. So that's it. Uh, let's go ahead and run the land automation job. And we'll start discovering devices. I think they're all set up and I'll hit the start button and we'll take a look at this the process here and at the same time I uh, let me load up oh, so it looks like I move these off the screen for the moment I looks like I've timed out of my connectivity to some of the boxes so let's see if I can reconnect some of the boxes before things get too far and um, one sec I'll be right back okay so I wanted to show you guys this First of all, the summary for land automation status, you can see that all the settings based on what we chose in the last screen, what that's going to look like. Right now we haven't discovered any devices, but this is the, that's the uh, specifics for this job. Over on the log side, you can see that we reserve the IP subnet that we're going to use for land automation. See, we're going to choose, this will be the RP address for the native underlay multicast and that we've started the network orchestration job on Cheese 6, which is the primary seed device. Over on devices, once it starts rolling in, you're gonna see that we've started to discover PNP capable devices. And let me bring up a device or two here and see if I can take a look. Okay, so on the bottom is Cheese 14, and we've missed a little bit of this, unfortunately, because I timed out. Cheese 14 started the plug and play process. You can see it's currently using it. Uh, don't pay attention to the gig 1048 there's an access point plugged into it right now that's not able to connect to a WLC and you can also see Qi 6 has received some configuration already from DNA Center so it's it's as part of that LAN auto we're doing uh, underlay multicast so DNA Center logged into the device and started provisioning MSDP started provisioning a loopback you can see loopback 60,000 was uh, provisioned for that and of course we should have also, we can take a look, we should have also received some DHCP config to set up the PMP process. You can see here, here's our DHCP config. So, and this came from DNA Center. And this is based on 
our uh, LAN auto pool. You can see option 43 points at the IP address of the DNA center. There's a lot of other codes here. It has to do with uh, the formatting of the option 43. But that's it. Now we're just waiting for these devices to start receiving their configs and be discovered and be claimed by DNA Center. You can see for some of this stuff, these devices are already um, you know, bringing up router ISIS and they have VLAN 1 addresses. Until we've discovered all of our devices and stopped the LAN auto process manually, these devices won't build layer 3 links. And the reason for that is because any downstream switches we might otherwise discover won't be able to you know, use their DHCP discover to learn uh, of the DNAC, so the DNA center. So that's why even though these devices start you know, receiving config and they start doing things like ISIS, they're still running more or less in layer 2 mode just with an IP address attached to their VLAN 1 so they could reach the v, uh, DNA center. And then when You'll notice here, let's go back to lay logs here. DNA Center is, uh, see if I can find it here. So we claimed the device, we generated a config with a, with a host name, right? We've added this uh, devices to inventory. We've reserved IP addressing. We've reserved IPs for these interfaces. So DNA Center, as it's discovering these devices, it's looking at CDP, it's looking at, at its up interfaces, it's figuring out when and done, what IP addresses do I need to save for this device? Do I need to configure? And it's going to do the same for the other side. So if it, if it finds two switches and they're connected together, DNA Center, as part of the LAN auto process, will not only discover that, hey, these two switches are connected together, but I need to allocate IP addresses and routing and everything for those layer 3 links. They're going to become layer 3 links when the LAN auto process is done even though during LAN auto they're going to still be layer 2 links so that the PNP, whole PNP process downstream can continue to work. Alright, so at this point we're, we just wait. Um, so I might, I'll probably speed this part up if I have any problems, which is, it's possible I have some devices that aren't in PNP mode or, or something like that, I'll, I'll check that out. But otherwise I'm just going to uh, move on from this point. So I'll be right back. All right, so I have one device that was not in PNP mode, which is good for us. That means we can see the full PNP discovery process here. And remember, uh, so this is Cheese 3. And so let's see if I can uh, bring up the interface here. Actually, this is the wrong one because we can't see the full, uh, can't see the full thing. So let's do this one. All right, so for Cheese 3, that's this one right here. This one wasn't in PNP mode. It, it hadn't wiped its config and restarted in PNP mode. All the other devices were LAN automated successfully, except for Cheese 3. When I logged into Cheese 3, uh, it was at a prompt, meaning it was not in plug and play mode. If you, if you put any input at all on the prompt, it stops the PNP agent, and it will not try to do plug and play again, and therefore it's not eligible for LAN automation. So I logged into Cheese 3, um, I ran a, uh, an EEM script that wipes the configuration and we're rebooting it now into PNP mode. So let me go ahead and minimize that and you can see, well you will be able to see since we're on the console here, that Cheese 3 is going to reboot. So I will um, let that reboot and bring it back up and then we can see the, the PNP process on the CLI. Okay, so Cheese 3, which is our edge node, is finished booting. It's a Catalyst 9300, as you can see. And we should very shortly see the PNP agent kick off after the boot here. Um, it'll go to the prompt where it says, you know, press enter to get started. And then we should see, in the back end, the PNP agent is starting on its own. So it's going to send out a DHCP discover. Um, the seed device is going to answer... Uh, you know, with an offer, with that option 43, and then PN, and then the PNP agent will learn it. Will make an HTTP connection to DNA Center, uh, download a certificate, then reconnect with HTTPS. And at that point, DNA Center should find it. it. Should show up on this screen over here, 
And then again, DNA Center should start delivering that config, that base config, and then uh, allocating IP addresses, al you know, discovering the neighbors, figuring out which interfaces it needs to uh, create, uh, allocate IP addresses for, for layer three. So just have to wait a minute for the PNP agent to kick off. It's, it's on kind of a timer. So we should just see it here on the console pretty soon, pretty soon. All right, there we go. Looks like we started. And we should see it show up on the LAN automation status fairly closely, uh, or uh, pretty soon here on the side. But you can see that you know we've we've started the PMP process, and we've already started getting some information from DNA Center. Again, uh, wouldn't pay much attention to the gig 1048. This switch also has an access point plugged into it, which can't reach in WLC. So APs, if they can't reach the WLC, will just go into a reboot cycle looking for a wireless LAN controller. Does not show up in the logs yet, but that's okay. Here you can see now we're started reserving IP address. You should see it show up pretty soon. If we go back to the summary, you can see we even have one in progress, so it should have been. I think it's now discovered. Uh, see if I can bring it back without switching. Yep, you can see we're now in the claiming phase. We found the switch, um, allocated a, a base kit config for it, including a host name. These are host names. And of course, this is annoying. So what you would probably do in the real world is uh, create that host, to map, host name map file that I mentioned as part of the LAN discovery, the LAN auto process. Uh, otherwise, you'd need to figure out, you know, who, who these device, you know, which devices these are, um, tie it back to the serial number or something. So. Probably next time I build this lab, I might take the time and build that host file just so I can, I don't have to go look up the serial numbers. But again, you can see on the left, we have started delivering config. We've got an ISIS adjacency. And remember, this is a flat layer two network right now. So that's why you're seeing all these ISIS adjacencies pop up because it's still a flat layer two network. Even though all these devices have an IP address on VLAN one, it's just, flat layer two until we stop the LAN auto process and then those devices will configure a full layer three underlay. So now you can see DNA Center is actually logging in. This is this is DNA Center logging in with a user that I've created called CPOC. So it's logging in and it's uh, doing telemetry, show commands, stuff like that. It's also delivering configuration. It's basically discovering as much as it can about the device and also configuring the basic config. We now see that it's claimed on the status. Once it says completed and it's got an address uh, in DNA Center, then we are done. We have all eight devices and there you go. We're now done. So at this point, we can just stop the LAN auto process. And then, like I said, we'll get a programmatic delivery of the full config. Now, I don't know if I can actually type on the interface level at this point so we could look at what at the what bit uh, at the base config that it's got I think I can do that without causing a problem I'll, I'll go ahead and try that now you'll see we've delivered our uh, credentials this is the credentials are based on the site it's part of the telemetry and device credentials stuff that you set up in DNA Center so there you go Looks like it allowed us to log in locally. So let's just take a look and see what basic config it's running before we stop LAN automation. So what's what's just what's going on in the box right now? And you'll see very basic config at this point. So uh, let's see if we can find it. So VTB mode transparent, you know, device tracking, basic basic config, including our basic uh, certificate, so that we can log it. You know, use HTTPS and everything with DNA Center. See that we set the system MTU, license boot levels, got some best practice config based on the fact, uh, based on that basic config rather. And 
you'll see there's, I mean, like I said, there's very little going on here, right? We've allocated our loot back um, based on that LAN auto pool. We've configured the user facing switch um, ports with device tracking. That's just part of the process. You can see interface, interface VLAN 1, we're using DHCP, and it's put it in the ISIS uh, process. So this is, again, just very basic config, but DNA Center is not a black box. It's not a magic box. It's just logging into the device based on the, the PMP process, and it's supplying basic configuration just for connectivity purposes so we can reach DNA Center. Notice also that because we had checked that box for underlay multicast, that it added the config for us to do multicast on the underlay. So there's that as well. So that's it. There's, like I said, there's very little going on here right now. Um, and so that's what it looks like before we stop LAN automation. You saw there was only one layer three interface. It was, it was VLAN one. It has an IP address pulled from DHCP. It's running ISAS, but just on that one layer three interface. So let's see what happens to this config when we hit stop and start the, and, and end the LAN automation process now that we're complete. So we're gonna hit stop. It's going to take DNA Center a minute to, to allocate and then deliver programmatically those configs to those devices and for them to start program, programming themselves here. So status, stop, in progress. Now this can take a little bit of time, so I um, might have to pause it just so you're not having to sit here and watch for you know 20 minutes or however long it takes. It just depends. And now this is a pretty small lab, actually. This probably won't take more than a, a couple of minutes. But just want to uh, not waste too much time just sitting here staring at a screen either. So I'll leave it run and then I'll speed it up if ne if necessary, or I'll cut it out. We can see already that DNA Center is logged into the device and it's making changes to the config. We lost our ISIS adjacencies because VLAN one is now down. Notice that our 40 gig interfaces, the physical 40, inter 40 gig interfaces. Um, are now coming up, being configured, getting IP addresses, being added to the ISIS process, all part of the DNA Center, uh, intellectual, you know, the process basically of land automation here. So we should see this, uh, as noisy as this is, the, the config itself should settle out pretty, pretty shortly. And then we can take a look and see what changed. You can see that, according to the logs, we are at that inter at that uh, time when we're configuring all the layer interfaces, all the layer three interfaces. The tier two and tier three devices has to do with how far away from our seed devices we are. So a tier three device is two hops away, or tier two devices are our adjacent device. Okay, network orchestration queue has been cleared. We've ended the session. Releasing the subnet, meaning we're that IP pool uh, for LAN automation. We've allocated all the devices we're going to uh, allocated all the IPs we're going to allocate, and we're releasing the rest of it to be used at another time. Again, we're still stat status stop in progress. This needs to say complete before we're actually done. But you can see based on the logs that we're very close to that to that time. And there we are. Status completed. Multicast enabled for multi for underlay. This is done. We have eight completed devices, none, no errors. Success and stop network orchestration success. We discovered eight devices, which we know based on our topology, that's how many we have. And there's our logs for it, and that's it. Now we just hit cancel um, to get out of it. So let's refresh. And here's all our devices that were discovered. So we'll go ahead and provision them. Now provisioning means add the, add the extra config, add the config that's specific to a device. Actually, let me, before I hit provision, let me show you exactly what I mean. So let's go to design and then pick, um, I forget where, I, if I did this at the global level or, or below, but you see under network settings, there's a thing like device credentials as an example. So here's our CLI credentials or SNMP connect credentials. We didn't turn on HTTP, but if we had, they would be here. 
This is what we're, DNA Center is expecting to use to log into the devices, and it's also what DNA Center will provision on those devices that it discovers and, and, and create these credentials. Um, uh, from a network perspective, it will also, when we provision the device, that's when we're saying, okay, you, you are going to the site and you are going to get all of this telemetry data. So you're going to get an ICE config. You're going to, you know, your DHCP server config, DNS server, you're going to get all of this config. And this, you know, your, your time zone will be set to this, so on and so forth. So when we provision the device and uh, go back to provision and under inventory, we're going to provision all our devices and we're going to provision them to the site and that's going to add that config. That's going to just add all of our config to it. So say next, if we had, if we had day end templates where we wanted to add extra config, that's how, that's where, this is where we do it as part of the provision. We don't. And then it's going to tell us basically, okay, well, for each device, what is the, what are we adding? And, or now that this is already on the device, it's not going to re-add it or write over it or anything like that. It's just letting us know what it's going to try to put on the devices if they don't already have it. So I'll hit apply. And that's just so we get all our AAA config and everything provisioned. And you'll see we'll start getting details about whether or not we were successful in doing that. At this point, we have a working underlay. So let me let me log in to, uh, let's go back to the device we were looking at and start taking a look at what changed? What is what does our config now look like? So uh, this is a big switch here. So in this case, uh, oh, this is because we're provisioning the device. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's because we're currently provisioning the device. Bad timing. So clear that out. Let's try that again. Show by brief. And this time, let's exclude unassigned device uh, IPs. So. All right, so what did we do? So DNA Center added IP connectivity to these interfaces, created, we, it had already created the loopback. We saw that before we finished LAN automation. The main thing it did was this, put IPs, provision the IPs on the interfaces. And it also, I, if we go to the other side, so say here you can see we added, you know, best practice config, IP router IS, ISIS, Lisp source later uh, source locator loopback zero. This is all like best practice config for this set setup, and and that's again part of what LAN automation does for you. You can see this is actually a slash thirty one, so a true point to point link. And then if we do show CDP neighbors based on interface forty gig one one one, we see that this switch is our other switch is our uh, where we're connected. So that AP is going to keep going, going to keep rebooting. Uh, let's see, I actually don't know which interface, which device that is. We can look at the config. This is where it would have been helpful to have uh, done that host name mapping thing. So let's look at cheese three. Oh. Let's look at cheese three. So 40 gig 101, uh, or 111 rather, that's cheese five. So cheese five is the other side of that interface with this IP address. So we should be able to log into Cheese 5. And let me do that now, actually. And I'll just, and we can see that DNA Center should have configured the other half, the other side of that for us. And we should have routing adjacency, basically. OK, try that again. So OK. So show CDP neighbor, so one ends in 25 is the one we're interested in. So 40 gig 103. So here you see, so fabric physical link, there's our IP address. And you can see, you know, it, it did the whole thing for us. It did, it, it figured out the IP addressing, allocated it, built the routing adjacencies um, and everything. So it brought up an entire underlay with LAN automation as part of uh, PNP. So that's kind of the power of LAN automation. Now it, it's obviously only useful for Greenfield, but you know, SD access is kind of a Greenfield design. Um, there is certainly migration strategies, but you have to start your fabric somewhere. So where you start your fabric, LAN automation is as good a solution as any. Um, you could of course other use other routing protocols, but you have to build that yourself if you do that with like OSPF and whatnot. 
Um, so that's land automation. I'd like to show you how to build a fabric next, but this, this video is already dragging on kind of long, so I'll put that in another video. Thanks for watching.